Hey everybody, it's Brock and we got a brand new episode of All About. Today we have a very special starfish to talk about, one that has six legs, is a vibrant red color, and can even be kept in your reef tank. Today we're learning all about the red Linkia starfish, Incanaster luzonicus. As you might have seen in my last video, I am in the process of getting a new camera, so these videos were shot on my iPhone. Still got some good footage though. This starfish is in my personal reef tank. Jumping into the quick stats of this red starfish, the price on them at my local fish store was only 20 bucks, which after looking around online seems like a total steal. Saw a few sites selling them for up to $60 if you wanted to get them online. Tank size for most starfish does not matter. They do not need a specific amount of room. They just need enough food to eat on. Whether you put them in a 30 gallon versus a 200 gallon, they will thrive under the right conditions. A typical tank setup would include plenty of live rock to graze on, a sand bed or crushed coral bed the algae can grow on for them to go after. I also recommend a starfish going into more of a seasoned tank. Don't let it be the first creature you put in a brand new tank that just cycled. Most time there's not going to be enough algae for him to go around and eat. Care level, in my opinion, is easy. There are some pointers you need to know about before buying a starfish. But once they're in the tank, they really fend for themselves with minimal care. A very headache-free creature to add to your tank. Temper is very peaceful. They're not a starfish that would go after your fish, nor knock over rocks in the tank. They're very good about bending those bodies around the frags and around the caves looking for algae to eat, whether it's in the back of the tank, the front of the tank, or in between. From my experience, reef compatibility of this red starfish is a yes. I currently have anemones, frog spawn, mushrooms, zoas, GSP, SPS, and leathers in this tank, and I've seen no issues so far. Nothing's been nipped at, nothing has shrunk up, I've never even caught the starfish being on top of any of them. What I saw reports of is an adult-sized red starfish had eaten clams, small anemones, and sponges. So overall, I think this would be a great decision for starfish to go into your reef tank. Temperature, you want it at 72 to 78 degrees. The reefs they come from are warm, tropical waters, usually sitting around 78 degrees. DKH, 8 to 12. pH, 8.1 to 8.4. And your salinity, 1.023 to 1.025. Parameters are very important for this starfish and other species of the starfish. They are extremely fragile to changes in your water parameters. Nitrate spikes. Salinity drops, those type of crashes can easily make the starfish perish. Another very important thing is acclimating the starfish. You want this to be a very slow acclimation via a drip tube. We typically drip them for four hours when we got them in the shop. Also do the same when bringing it home. So from the store water parameters to your tank parameters, you want that change to be as slow and as gradual as possible. Not too quick or it could hurt them. Also. A big role for starfish is that they should not be exposed to the open air. Do not lift them completely out of the water. They breathe through those tubes under their legs, so taking them out of the water immediately causes them to suffocate. And a prolonged time out of water will cause them to perish. So make sure you use a bowl or some kind of dish that keeps them under the water at all times as you transfer them from that acclimation bucket into your tank. The max size of these red starfish is 6 inches. It kind of surprised me when I saw it. That's a hefty starfish whenever you have a full grown one in the tank. Starfish do tend to grow relatively slow over the years that you keep them. I would expect probably two to three years before you actually saw this starfish reach adult size. The color is on them, definitely eye catching. It's a reddish orange color and up close you can see these black lines that make a maze all over the top of the starfish giving it a rough dry appearance looks really good in the tank. The diet of the starfish is an omnivore. Throughout the day, you'll catch them roaming the sand, the rock, the glass, even on your equipment, looking for algae, detritus, and leftover foods to eat. They eat sponge in the wild, so if you have some growing on the back of your rocks, they will have a heyday out there. If you notice your tank not having enough natural food for them to eat, you can supplement their diet with flakes and pellets, dry seaweed, frozen food like brine and mysis shrimp, feeding tablets even, and small pieces of meat from clams or shrimp. 
from the video, you can see me trying to feed them a piece of raw shrimp that I thawed out. At first, the legs would not seem to actually grab the shrimp until I placed it right below him. So he was basically just sitting on that piece of shrimp. And eventually uh, he took it at that point. So you can try that just in case you think he's not getting enough in his diet. What did catch me off guard was whenever I found the starfish on the glass sitting right on an Asterina starfish. He has the Asterina right in the center of his mouth as it was about to eat it. I watched it sit on top of the starfish for a while, but after about 15 minutes, it left the starfish and the Asterina didn't look like it took any damage. So my jaw was definitely on the floor thinking I had just bought a starfish eating starfish. Origin is the Indo-Pacific region of our oceans. This region spans across the east coast of Africa, Australia, Indonesia, and the Philippines. From what I've read, there are no studies or research being done to captive breed this specific starfish. So any that you see and buy are going to be caught from the wild. There is a ton of research on their regeneration of their legs, but not so much yet on actually captive breeding them. Compatibility, just ask down in the comments if you have a specific fish list and you want to know if he's going to go in there just fine with them. This is a starfish, so you usually want it to go into a tank that has relatively peaceful fish. Fish like clowns, gobies, wrasse, tangs, cardinals are all good picks to pair with this star. Any kind of reef fish, that's where they're from, so that's what they're going to do good with. Ones to avoid would be your predator fish that would see them as a snack and go for their legs. Fish like triggers, groupers, puffers, and sometimes even eels, these are a little bit more risky to put in the tank together because they will nip at them. Also keep in mind harlequin shrimp would go after them too, and that would be an expensive dinner. Thank y'all for tuning into this video, the red linkia starfish. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Turn that notification bell on so you know when we release a new episode. Red linkia starfish makes an excellent addition to the established reef tanks. They're low maintenance, once settled, provide natural tank cleaning services for you, and just add that incredible visual appeal with their vibrant coloration. Just remember, patience with acclimation, stable water parameters are the key to success. Stay safe, be kind, and I'll see y'all later.